Okay, so true story. I was supposed to be on this feminist panel with Vice and I did the whole interview for it and they were going to put me on it and then they decided to switch me to the education panel and I feel like I dodged a bullet because there's no way I would have made it through this thing without walking out. I have a lot of respect for the three right-leaning conservative non-feminist, I don't know if they're actually conservative, but non-feminist women on this panel, but I don't know how they did it. I don't know how they did it because these women were nightmares, nightmares. So we're going to watch a little bit of it. I might do this in parts. I I have I still have not yet to get through this whole video. It's 43 minutes. I don't want to torture you, but I do want to share with you guys what I would have said. I am going to be on a future vice panel in March. I don't know if I can say the topic, but it's going to be in March and it definitely wasn't as torturous as this. But I mean, what do you expect? These are feminists. Anyways, there's two trans women on this panel and I think the host might be trans too. Just tell me what you guys think. And I'm sorry if the host isn't trans, but I think she is. He, whatever it is. How is it sexism when we have no barriers today? So we can, we who can pick what no we want to pick. Who doesn't have barriers? Women doesn't, don't have barriers? I'm, women, yeah. What, what's we have no you? barriers. You can do whatever you want. Uh, I can you? or you can. What's stopping you? Okay, so it's making me nervous to watch this because now I can see how they're editing it. And um, so, of course, it's longer than this. We were there for maybe three hours. I saw a reaction video from one of the more right-leaning um, panelists. I forget her name. I think it's Layla. I don't remember if I'm sorry if I have her name wrong. But um, she, she said that they were there for five hours and it was one of the most unproductive conversations she's ever had. And um, they were like yelling at her and laughing at her, the two more outspoken non-feminists on the panel. But yeah, it's weird to see the, the, the way that they're editing this because now I can see when I'm on a panel, it's going to be what it's going to look like. It's actually making me nervous for when it comes out, but whatever, it's, <laughs> it's vice. Can you guess who is like the feminist? It's so obvious. <laughs> Should we mark this bad boy at all? Oh my goodness. Oh, here we go. Hi, welcome everybody. I'm Liz Landers. I'm Vice News' chief political correspondent, and we are here today to talk about some of the biggest issues dividing women across the country. In other words, we're here to talk about feminism. First, I just want to say we know we can't represent everybody's views, but we did try our best to bring together a diverse group of women. Okay, so the host, I don't know. I don't know, guys. We live in such a weird world right now. I just don't know. It's Vice. Is that a trans woman? Maybe. There's certain angles where I'm like, definitely woman. And then there's certain angles where I'm like, hmm. But anyways. Today. In today's polarized world, is feminism dead? You guys saw your hand. I think that depends on the definition of feminism. <laughs> so apparently that's a trans, that's a trans woman. Like I thought that one was for sure a woman. The the short hair, like what, what cut is that even? What cut is that? I strongly think that feminism is. So Eli, Eli is a trans woman. So there's two trans women on this panel and that's like, it's a panel about feminism. This is such a weird world we're in right now. More of an action than an identity. I would say it's uplifting all women, in which case it's very alive. At the same time, um, if we do follow that definition, feminism has splintered off into so- I feel so sorry for men. I'm sorry, you guys. Like you guys have to double question yourselves now every time you meet a woman that has masculine features. <laughs> many different areas that you can look at um, people like Sheryl Sandberg who say you should just get another nanny if you feel oppressed and if we're talking so this panel has one two three four five six seven eight nine nine women on them and two of them are trans women you know that there's so many like influencer types that would want to be on this that are women that are feminists but guess what their spot is taken by a trans woman about that kind of feminism, um, yeah, it's pretty dead. Yeah, I mean, as long as the human race exists, feminism, feminism will never be dead. There's something that we're really going to have to strive and work, work towards. Um, 
to make sure that there's equality. So, so the two black women or three black women on this panel, two of them are feminists and they are like at the top of the oppression Olympics. And I'll bet you they're lesbian too. I mean, are most feminists like women like this? How, who dates them? Like what men out there dates a woman that is so angry and oppressed, you know, always screaming about her oppression Honestly, I, I would be—I wouldn't be surprised if most of the feminists on this panel were lesbians. Feminism is not dead. I don't know that it can die. As long as there's power and oppression, there will be people fighting for equity. And um, until that somehow goes away, feminism is alive and well. I How do you have a country without power? <laughs> Why does the left keep obsessing about that? Like. Our country has like so many people in it, millions and millions and millions of people. It has to have some sort of organization. There is going to be people with power. And our country, I hate to break it to you, but it's white and it was built by men. And that's facts, mainly because of history. Women have to bear children. Men can't bear children, or at least according to the left, they can now. But men can't bear children. And that you know held us held us back technically but it did it, it's because what we have to do we feed children from our bodies it's not like we can go and work like 10 hour a day jobs because we need to feed a baby every two hours and women are acting like this is something that's oppressing us now it's we're oppressed because you know uh, of just bio biological being a female being a female biologically is always going to be different and cause us to have i guess barriers because we need to take care of our babies well now they're just killing their babies and feeding them synthetic formulas but in the past when this country was built women we had a role and there's nothing wrong with that i mean of course there's always going to be exceptions to the rule there's always going to be women that are going to do more thing be in positions of power but in general men or are more biologically suited to be in power over society, which has to have order. And when there's order, there is going to be power. It happens everywhere. I was a public school teacher and you can't just be like, all right, let's all just, you know, you kids can have the same amount of power as the teachers and the teachers can have the same amount of power as the principal. That would never work. You have to have order in a society. So these women, literally, they're just going to keep spinning around in circles and being angry for the rest of their lives because it's never going to be equal. Well, now they want equity, but it's never going to be. We're just, we're biologically different. Deal with it. I think feminism um, isn't actually about equality. It's about equality when it benefits us. I think so I did not know who she is, Pearly. I looked her up and now I'm subscribed. Okay, apparently she, this last year she's really blown up. She's got like a million subscribers on YouTube. Very logical. She does. She definitely sticks to her wheelhouse, which is like feminist issues, which is not, not really my like, I don't know. I just don't, I just don't care about talking about being a woman that much or what a woman is. It's just like, uh, but um, she sticks to that and does a lot of great discussions on that. Feminism. It's really about women wanting special privileges and treatment yep. at the expense <laughs> of men so often. <laughs> and I think it's alive and well, sadly. I think feminism is also alive. So they go through and say, oh, they're feminine, why feminine, blah, 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 blah. So let's get, let's see what we got here. She's great. I described her, subscribed to her channel. I think that she's really funny. I actually like the way she does her long form content and I haven't been doing long form content on YouTube. I just started like four months ago. I was just posting rarely, like I've been on, and now I've started posting shorts and long form is like new for me. I don't really know how to do it, but I'm learning. But um, feminism has always existed. I think America's a little obsessed with themselves and it's like always feminism is rooted in America <laughs> and like, oh. She's anti-capitalist, probably some sort of indigenous. She has her little indigenous vest on, who knows? probably paid a lot of money for that um very angry very like so the thing about feminists is it's like a hierarchy there's like the white feminists and we don't like the the white feminists they're they're like on the lowest of the totem pole and then there's the black feminists and they're like we have our intersectionality and there's the indigenous feminists and then there's the trans feminists it's like oh my gosh wow imagine being part of that group and how much torture that is i don't know how I don't know how the left tolerates themselves. I really don't.
Eight women started it, and it's kind of offensive because for thousands of years, women have been dying for their rights. I think as a black woman specifically, uh, when you talk about feminism, yeah, the main... She said women have been dying for their rights. I just, we, I want examples. As a teacher, I've always been someone to say, okay, for example, with my students, like give me an example. Because when you just say women are dying for their rights, what do you even mean by that? Is that like give examples? Is, where is that happening now too? Where are women dying for their rights in the US? It's happening in some of these really crazy um, Muslim countries, but here in the US, where are women dying for their rights? Stream first thing you think about is a certain type of feminism that tends to exclude still, even today, even with intersectional fem feminism, exclude um, African-American women. And it's always kind of done that. And also upper middle class white women has predominantly been the face of what we quote unquote consider feminism. So here, I, like I said, sh there's a hierarchy to feminism. Upper middle class white women have always been the faces of feminism. And it's like, so? And, and also, where's your proof? Where's your proof? For example, give me a for example, because what I see in feminism is basically the standard is a septum piercing, anger, some ugly tattoos, a weird haircut, and, you know, fat. I hate to say that, but that's the color doesn't matter. But those other other looks are definitely the, the, main, the main tenets of a modern day feminist. Maybe in the past, I mean... I would say that the women's rights movements of like a hundred years ago are completely different than the feminist movement of today. They didn't call themselves feminists. They were, a lot of them are Christian women and they just wanted the right to vote and it was completely different. They weren't like putting fake blood on their crotches and like crying and screaming on Capitol steps with fake blood on their crotches. You know, it was, it was more dignified. Uh, there was definitely Feminism also had a lot to do with keeping the society moral. Uh, women were also very much behind, like in the 90s and the 80s. I don't know if you remember when. We don't care about this anymore, but back in the 80s and 90s, there was like standards for music. And music would come out that was like super debased and would say all of this like disgusting stuff. And that's when it was starting coming out. It's getting shocking because before music wasn't that bad. It was, it was more like healing, right? You listen to music in the 60s and the 70s and you're like, wow, this stuff is so like uplifting. And then 80s and 90s, especially in the 90s with all the gangster rap and stuff that came out and a lot of women were like, hey, we don't want this. Put these, put labels on the CDs to warn about kids. It was, it was women. That was a feminist movement. But now feminism, you know, or being a, woman getting together and fighting for some sort of rights has just turned into straight leftist you know garbage anyways what do you guys you guys what do you guys think like male or female for the host biological which one i think feminism is attempting to say okay the first thing we agree on is that there are barriers and friction to what i need and what i want based on the fact that i'm a woman what it ignores is that and what privilege is, is that you may not have to think that being a woman and being a black woman and being a black woman who has a disability, for example, impacts you further. You have more barriers. You have more friction. You are less able. Okay. So this is intersectionality. It's what the left is super obsessed with right now and teaching our children. I've seen lessons like this in our, in our schools. And I'm going to do this in parts because this is already getting a little long, but intersectionality is basically counting your oppression. So like a white male christian straight has no oppression but like a black lesbian trans which there's such thing as lesbian trans now i mean it's so confusing lesbian trans woman is like at the peak of oppression like has so much oppression um and that's called intersectionality so obviously this woman that has like no legs um who's probably getting government checks for disability who knows but she is uh happy i mean you could tell she's like elated that she has something to be oppressed with because she's white you know and in, in the oppression olympics on the left that is like you know you're on the top so now she's like okay now i have an oppression and um yeah I, the idea that she somehow needs to have like an equal society is just never gonna happen i mean it's just things that she guess will never be a famous tennis player uh what is she complaining about i think our country does a great job at um taking care of people that are disabled compared to uh, comparative to other countries.
to get what you want. You're undervalued in a way that's like, okay, well, you know, that's life. That's what I mean by equity and that we're mm. able to, without friction, all get the same needs met. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. See, I disagree. Without friction, all get the same needs met. So the lazy person that doesn't want to do anything still gets all of their needs met because that's equity. With that, I think life is easier if you're a girl. Yeah. Um, actually, yeah, I think I think there's a lot advantage. of benefits um, <laughs> that men don't have. I'm, I'm not going to speak anything Ooh, to race. Mad. I'm just talking about gender specifically. It's usually like an excuse. Like, honestly, I think as a girl, you have equal opportunity in the world. I think there's benefits. Like, for example, we have quotas for women in specific jobs that are given. To oh, my gosh. This is watching. This is making me nervous for when my panel comes out. Ours was definitely not as like cringe. This gets worse. And I'm going to do this in parts. I'm probably going to watch like two more minutes and then we'll do this in another part. If I feel like going back to this and people actually watch this and like this video, because it is pretty torturous. But Watching this is like, okay, it's how are they going to edit our panel? <laughs> Although ours was better because I actually had a friend on it. They asked me if someone wanted, they asked me for contacts and I was able to get a friend of mine who's a homeschool dad on the panel with me. So it was really nice. We, we sat together. They sat us together. So that was also really nice. I wasn't like next to some antagonistic leftist that aren't given to men so yeah i would i would say it's easier being a girl yep. just from a viewpoint over here though it seems there's a lot of privilege oh my gosh pretty privilege in what you're saying and mm. that you're white and you present do you think i'm pretty thank you i think that you present in a way that beauty standards have accepted and so there's something about pearly that i love like there's something about her the girl that's saying you think i'm pretty the one that's speaking up um she just has this stability to her and this way to to uh i, I can't I don't have that. Like, I probably would have walked out of this room with the way that these women were, as, especially as it continues, apparently gets really bad. But um, she just has this, like, even-keeled nature. I think it comes from her athletic background of being a pro athlete and really getting into athletics. You, you're able to control your emotions more, and you're able to be more in control when you're a, comp a competitor like that. And there's just something about her that's really cool to me. Oh, they to call me ugly on the internet all the time. They, they be roasting me daily, I swear to God. I don't mean to say I think you're gorge. I just mean that there are a certain value that we give to certain bodies. You can tell this woman's miserable. I mean, I'm just gonna put it out there. A lot of these women are on meds. And I'm not to, not to put down people that need meds like psychotropic medicine to feel better, but most uh, the left-leaning women are the most likely to be diagnosed with a mental health condition. They're, they are on a lot of psychotropic med medicine, antidepressants, stuff like that. They're not happy. And she just has that vibe. I mean, let's that. also dig into mm -hmm. why these quotas exist and why these, um, what you're calling because privileges Because we want exist. special treatment. Um, no, but it's because there have mm -hmm. historically and presently in most jobs been fewer women mm -hmm. and because of sexism. How is it sexism when we have no barriers today? So we can, we can pick what no we want to pick. It doesn't have barriers. Women don't, don't have barriers? I'm, women, yeah. What, what's we stopping have no you? Barriers. You can do whatever you want. Uh, I can you? or you can. What's stopping you? <laughs> As a woman, as a woman. As a woman. As a woman, See, as a woman. That ignores a lot that I'm a woman with a disability. So mm -hmm. there's a lot stopping me that you mm -hmm. don't have to think about. Well, as I said before, I'm about. speaking about women. Duh. Like, I, I don't know why she's trying to put that out as a f oppression flex. Like, yes, you have no legs. Like, I'm not trying to make fun of her or anything. But, like, you can't do certain things because you have no legs. Like, so that's, there's, there's no way you're going to have an equal society. Like, you're going to go to certain historical sites. You're not going to be able to climb certain mountains. It's just the way it is. But, um, yeah, it's, I don't know why that, that's even part of this conversation. No, you're speaking not, as, oh, you're speaking for yourself. You're speaking as, a, as an able-bodied able -bodied white woman. woman. I, I that understand. is white. Who presents of course, white. Of course, of course. As an able-bodied white woman. No, who presents white, presents white. Because, you know, some white people actually are indigenous. You didn't know that, right? Um, so, guys, I don't know. I had a pretty good experience with my vice panel. I'm only going to do six minutes of this. I might do a part two. I don't think so. <laughs> but if you want me to, let me know. I don't normally do long content. I want to start doing it more. And But make sure that you watch out for my vice panel that's coming out in March. I'll definitely share it on my platforms. And yeah. This gets worse. If you want to go torture yourselves and watch the whole thing, or if you want to wait for a part two and watch it with me, just tell, comment below and let me know, hey, I want a part two. I like your insight on this or whatever. But um, yeah, pray, pray for America. Pray for America's feminists.